Hi, welcome to Gloria Deo Academy, raising lifelong worshipers, lifelong learners, and lifelong servants. Today we have Mr. Fessler with us, and we're going to be starting with the School Rhythms Prayer Calendar. And now as we are coming into the month of October, the Prayer Rhythms Calendar says this is when parents and students really start to feel the pressure, and the books and assignments just keep on coming. Mr. Fessler, can you tell us why is it important for parents to know this about the month of October? Yeah. Well, first of all, just thank you for doing this with me. I think you do such a great job and work so hard on this kind of uh, stuff to make sure our parents know what's happening. And Rhythm's prayer calendar was originally sent out so the parents would have an understanding of of the ups and downs of a school year. Um, And it's really important that they know that in order to focus on the bigger picture of what's happening, constantly be pulled back to why are we here? Why are we doing this education? The Rhythm's calendar's reminds us to make sure we're focused on that much bigger picture of all that. Okay. And so as we, if we know as co-teachers, okay, October, the pressure starts to build. How can this affect home days? Or even if you have high school kids or upper, upper school kids, how does that affect the relationships with parents and their older kids when they're working at home? And what can parents do about it? Yeah. So when, when the pressure start to build, um, you know, there's, Students feel that pressure of how do we get good grades or this test is coming up and how do I make sure I'm ready for this test? And those pressures truly affect a student's well-being as far as even even all the way down to their identity. Sometimes a student will be so concerned about a grade because that grade somehow reveals what they think is their identity. And it's just not a true statement. So um, what we want to do with our parents is make sure all of our parents are in alignment with understanding that only Christ gives identity. And so when a parent can hold on to that and view that through those lenses, then having those conversations with the kids become so much easier. So this child is struggling in that moment with so much pressure and so much. Um, School is building the month of October. Like it's yeah. all sort of adding, piling on. Right. And then how, how does this, how does a parent help? Well, then you're saying the parent needs to be in alignment, in alignment with their relationship with Christ. Right. And so when a, when a, parent can hold that steady and be able to communicate to a student, hey, this is going to be okay. Even if you don't you don't get the grades you want on this, mm-hmm. um, we're here, we love you, we care about you, and help them see through the, through the filter of Scripture that God alone gives us identity. And it's kind of like, I, I've used this illustration before, but if my back is out of alignment, I know it because of how I respond to everything around me. When we are out of alignment with who God's telling us that we are as parents or what God's called us to do as parents, it shows up too. It shows up at the dinner table or wherever the the home day's happening at. It shows up and it looks like impatience or it looks like frustration or it looks like um, struggle. And and as a parent, we get sucked into that almost. And we've got to be the ones who are in alignment with God, making sure that we're getting our daily bread so that when the student's struggling, we can give them their daily bread and help them through the hurdles of life. Great. Thank you. Well, so what would it look like? You gave some examples there about what it looks like when a parent is not in alignment. So and when the pressure is building for everyone, the stress is increasing, we might be impatient. But what what would it look like then for a parent to be in alignment? Yeah. So I want to make sure I understand the question well. But if I if I understand you, if a parent is on a home day and a student is feeling pressures and and even maybe not even just pressure, maybe they just don't want to do the work. Right. Um, like, what is it? How would you look at that parent and say, yes, you're in alignment with what God's asked you to do right now? Is that? Yes. A practical example. What would that parent do? Yeah. If a parent's first thought is this is a discipleship moment, that that is a pretty good indicator. You're in alignment with, with what God's asked you to do as a parent. Because uh, Deuteronomy 6, it's when they sit, when they lie down, when they walk along the way, you're always helping them understand who the living God is. And so there's that element of that. I think the other thing is that the fruit of the Spirit will be seen and your child will understand greater who the Holy Spirit is in your life in those moments. Great. I love that answer that ultimately as parents, when we are in alignment with the Lord, we have hearts and eyes to really see those discipleship moments and opportunities with our kids. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's accurate. Now, this leads us into the question, what are we doing with those discipleship moments? on a home day or when our older kids are doing their homework at home and they reach a struggle point, an obstacle, and we see, we recognize this is a discipleship moment for us. What, what are we doing with those moments? What can you offer some encouragement to that? 
Thanks for the question. I, I think that maybe to go backwards will help us to go forward with this conversation. I think oftentimes parents panic when they don't see their stuck child responding in a way that they would believe is godly or the way that they would want them to do. And so there's almost like this panic that sets in and we go straight from what this child's experiencing with this pressure into you shouldn't act like that. Um, but God, God does things a little different. He actually creates communication for connection. And we need to connect with our student's heart in that moment and really try to be understanding, figure out where they are, what's happening, why it's happening. And in order to do that, that requires us listening and really helping our child understand, we're here with you. We're, we're, we're going to go through this together because I think sometimes we, we break out this, why are you acting this way? Or you shouldn't be acting this way. Or God tells you to do this. And God, to, instead of just walking with them and, and struggling with them a little bit, I think we've talked about this before, that words have power. Our, our words have a lot of power throughout scripture. And that's been abused in the church. And so I want to be careful with that, but it, it does not take away the truth of words have power. And as mm-hmm. parents, the words we use with our students, um, it, it will open them up or shut them down. And mm-hmm. our job is to really uncover some of the things that they're struggling with and, and, and help them through that. You mentioned in there, really seeing their hearts when they're upset or when there's a struggle, because you have taught before about how there's a lot of layers in our students day-to-day lives. So things such as the day-to-day events, the issues underneath that, the hidden issues, mm. that, and when we get down and even into identity and theology, would you like to share about those a little bit with us? Yeah, there is, in all of us, we often don't think about ourselves as, as being as layered as we are. There are events of life that happen, and I'll, I'll share a story with that in just a minute, but that event is driven by the issues that we all carry some experiential issues that are individual to us. And then there are hidden issues that humans just have that we don't even realize are there. And then there's this identity and that's intrinsic for all of us. There are certain things that um, drive us to do certain events. And I think as parents, we often jump from event to theology. And what we need to do is slow down and go from event to issue. So I'll I'll share a quick little story with you on this and then it may make some more sense because those are some pretty abstract ideas. But if I get in the car with my wife and uh, my phone rings and it's my mom and I answer the phone and my wife and I are going on a date and the whole time I'm on the phone with my mom, we get to the restaurant, we get out and my wife's upset and I can't figure out why she's upset. The only thing that happened was I got a phone call from my mom. Well, clearly she wanted to be in a situation where it was her and I, right? And so instead of that happening, I spend the whole time on the phone with my mom. So we, we talk through that and find out, okay, don't be on the phone with, with your mom whenever we're going to dinner. So we addressed an issue, and that was that I was on the phone with my mom. So next time, if if we only go to that layer, next time we get ready to go on a date, and my brother calls, and I pick up the phone call, I answer, and I say to my wife, "But it wasn't my wa- it wasn't my mom, it was my brother." And she's like, "Yeah, that's not the issue." So if we just deal with events, we go from event to event to event, and we never deal with the deeper hidden things that are really are really there. So what my wife's really saying to me in that moment is. I want you to care and I want you to focus on me during this time. Here are the reasons why. And that can take us all the way down to identity. And I think that's what our goal is, even with our students. But often a student will have an event such as, I don't want to do my work today. That's just an event. We as parents, um, because of the fast paced world we're in, because we think they should know better, we automatically go to, you shouldn't act like that or you shouldn't think like that. But all we're dealing with is the event. And my goal, I hope, even with the teachers on our campus, is that when a student's having an event of life, whatever that is, how do we uncover that issue, that hidden issue, all the way down to an identity, which is obviously driven by our theology? Okay, so when our parents are having a struggle with the pressure building with schoolwork or doing school at home, we want to see those discipleship moments because we as parents are in alignment. And then you talked about words have power, and we want to... Keep this in mind as we speak into not just the single events that are happening day to day, but to see our children for all those layers that are happening in their lives and be able to speak into them through events, issues, hidden issues, identity and theology, like you mentioned. Yeah, I think it's a great summary. The the only thing I would add is as parents, I think sometimes we live in the shoulds. This is where our child should be, not this is where our child really is. 
and in life, you want to make sure that you, it, it, in my opinion, now I want to be careful about saying the word should here, but I think it's incumbent upon parents to want to know where their child is, even if it's a little out of step with where they want them to be. For the rest of your life, I for the rest of my life, I hope as a parent, my child has a desire and a freedom to come to me and say, here's where I am. And here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm feeling. Even if it's not where I want them to be, it gives me an, a voice into their life. The moment we've all had someone speak words of encouragement or significance into our life and it changed our life. The object for me, for I, I would hope that all for all of our parents is that when a child is struggling, that we figure out how what's it look like to speak life into them and encouragement into them. So I think I think what you said was a great summary. I would just add that I think we need to be careful with the this is where they should be as opposed to, no, here's where they really are. And I can help walk them through that. As a parent, we can probably all think of a time when we maybe didn't use our words wisely. And those moments are hard as we see the look on our kids' faces and we know that words have power. So how would you encourage a parent through this when we know we didn't go in the direction with our words that we wanted to? I, I one of our goals for our seniors is that they live a life of repentance and responsibility. That's what we're all reaching for and trying to go go toward. The idea of perfection, I think it's a lot of us in trouble. It is so much better for our students to hear us say, I'm sorry, I was wrong, will you forgive me? Than it is for them to see us live this perfect life because one, it's out of reach for them. And so as parents, my, my hope as a parent is that my child sees me living a life of repentance. It reminds me I need a savior. And I hope that that is always before them. If, if I need a savior, um, I'm hoping it sets an example for them that they need a savior and they can always turn to him and ask for forgiveness for those things. And I think as parents, we need to give ourselves a lot of grace, but we also need our students to see how much grace God gives us. I think that's a beautiful opportunity to, to just model the gospel and in, in our prayer life as well as we turn to the Lord and confess and ask for forgiveness to do that with our kids as well. That's great. I was at a, I was in a situation one time where this guy was talking to me about leadership and I just told him, I said, I don't think I can do that. And he's like, that's the best place in life to be. When you say you can't, you need to get on your knees and ask God to help you through that. Yeah. And I think that you're right because we, we can't always offer the best words to our students, but we can say, God, please help me. And when I don't, help me take responsibility. Yeah. So we need to be in alignment with our spiritual walks and use our words wisely because they have power so that we can see those discipleship moments. And then we can speak into all the different layers of our children's lives. You also have mentioned to faculty and staff that the kids need to hear our stories. Yeah. What does it mean to share our stories? And I think that would apply to parents as well. So, yeah, first of all, I, I think that words shape our our narrative, our lives for the future. And the words that we speak to our students, they're shaping their narrative, their story for the future. God uses people throughout Scripture. He uses their story. He uses where they are um, to do amazing things in, in the world. I think when it comes to helping to shape the narrative of our child's life, I think parents need to ask the question, when they grow older, what what story are they going to tell about? how they experienced me as a parent, how, what story they're going to tell about how um, we sought God or we walked through this together in life. And so I think parents, it's important on one level that we understand that we're shaping their narrative, but I also think that kids need to hear your story. Um, and at age appropriate, right? Different levels, but the good, the bad, the ugly, and how God brought you through it. I think kids live in this poster world today where everything has to be just right and they hope everything goes viral because it went right or it goes viral because everything goes desperately wrong. I think we need to teach our kids, no, no, life sometimes goes well, sometimes does not go well, but the story of my life is God redeemed me. God God is constantly helping me. And so I think parents need to share that story often. There's some part of, especially for me as a dad, my kids almost look to me like a hero and I want them to know I'm a broken father and I'm wanting to point them to the perfect father. I'm a broken husband and I'm wanting to point my family toward the perfect groom. I think that as as parents, we need to share the story of, of, of our failures that can help guide our, our kids away from some of those things. 
I love that. I think it even applies for pre-K parents and our young lower grammar school parents. Because if I have a student who is struggling with friendships or making friends, I then as a parent can share my story. Mm. When I was in school, this happened to me with friends or this is, and, and I know that the Lord will step in and he will give us discernment or wisdom to know what's the right next step and to be in prayer about that. And it means a lot to the kids too. They love to hear our own experiences yeah. and yeah. how. Yeah. Around our dinner table, one of the, one of our favorite things to do is, and we don't prompt this, but our kids will always ask us, can you tell me a story when I was little? And yes. so we will do that. But it almost always comes around to dad, when you were younger, what, and it's hard for me to remember those things, but whenever I tell them the stories of failure or of um, disobedience to God or something great that God did or a miracle. They remember those things. You're right. It, that narrative is so powerful throughout scripture. God reveals himself through, through narrative. And um, it's just a beautiful thing. It helps us remember the good of, of who God is, his faithfulness. We're actually going to be offering an opportunity for dads in particular to come to campus one evening with their kids and enjoy a time of fellowship, devotions, and discipleship and sharing their stories. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, Tuesday, October 15th from 6 to 7 p.m. on campus, uh, we're going to have some fire pits and some s'mores ready. And we asked dads to come um, with their students. But for this time, it's only grades kinder through fourth grade. Bring some folding chairs and just join us. This is going to be a night where we just sit around and talk, have a great time. And um, we'd love to see our dads there. Again, that's October 15th from 6 to 7 p.m. on campus. You mentioned this is only for kinder through fourth graders and their dads. Will there be another opportunity for our older students? Yeah, um, we, we will be hosting another opportunity for a fireside chat for older students next semester. I like that because then we'll be able to have kind of our younger kids and their dads together. And then we'll we get to change gears a little bit for our older students. Yeah, and if I understand this correctly, dads don't have to come with something already prepared we'll have promptings and stuff there for them to share with their children. So I'm I'm excited about it. I hope that we have a number of dads show up with their kids on campus for that evening. Yep. It's just for one hour. And we asked, did you bring just some lawn chairs and maybe some, some waters or a blanket and bring your Bible if you have that too. And then we'll just spend time together and have s'mores at the end. It's going to be a great time. Awesome. Well, thank you, Mr. Fessler, for sharing and for just being here to provide wisdom and pour in to our parents and encourage them as we get further along in the school year. Well, Robin, again, thank you. You're amazing. Thank you for all you do. That's all we have for this episode. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and we hope you all have a wonderful fall semester. 